Welcome to another lecture series by Medico Medics. Pharmacology, Chapter 1, Introduction to Pharmacology. So in this brief introduction, we will begin asking the question, what is pharmacology? We will discuss its scope, history, classification of drugs, its nomenclature, routes of drug administration. We will introduce concepts like pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. Now, pharmacology is the branch of medicine that studies drugs, their effects on the body, and the body's response to them. And we can divide it into pharmacokinetics, so what the body does to the drug, like absorption or metabolism, is studied here. Then we have pharmacodynamics, so what the drug does to the body. For example, we study the mechanisms of action, its effects, etc. Now, when we look at the scope of pharmacology, key fields include clinical pharmacology, so application of drugs to treat diseases. We have toxicology, so the study of harmful effects of different substances. We have pharmacogenomics, so the role of genetics in drug response. And we have experimental pharmacology, so laboratory research to study drug effects. And what would be the application of all of these? Well, to develop safer, more effective drugs, to address challenges like antibiotic resistance. For example, pharmacogenomics helps explain why some people respond better to certain antidepressants than others. Now, taking a very brief look at the history of pharmacology, we have ancient times where natural remedies like willow bark were used for pain relief. We move into the Middle Ages. Here, mysticism turns into early scientific methods. We have people like Avicenna and his experiments with opium. And finally, arriving at the modern era with discoveries of synthetic drugs, antibiotics like penicillins, etc. Now, we typically classify drugs by four main criteria, either by source, by use, mechanism of action, or by system. So if we're talking about its source and we say that it's natural, it means we're talking about drugs that are derived directly from natural sources such as plants, microorganisms, or animals without significant chemical modification, like penicillin from mold. If it's semi-synthetic, like amoxicillin, here, these are drugs initially derived from natural sources, but chemically modified in the laboratory to enhance their properties, such as having increased efficacy or reduced side effects. Synthetic drugs like paracetamol. These are drugs entirely manufactured through chemical synthesis, with no direct natural source, designed to mimic or improve natural compounds. Then we have the classification by use. So if it's therapeutic, like antibiotics, these are drugs used to treat or manage diseases or medical conditions, alleviating symptoms or eradicating the underlying cause. Then we have by diagnostics. So for example, contrast agents. These are drugs or substances used to aid in the identification or visualization of diseases or abnormalities, often during imaging, for example, like x-rays or MRIs. And we have prophylactic, like vaccines. So drugs or agents administered to prevent diseases or infections before they occur by enhancing, for example, immunity or reducing risk factors. We also have by mechanism of action, but this is covered in later slides and lectures. Finally, by system, so drugs targeting specific systems, whether it's the cardiovascular system or the nervous system, etc. Now, let's briefly take a look at drug nomenclature. So, we have paracetamol. Now, that's its generic name. However, it goes under a different chemical name. So, it's n acetyl p aminophenol or however you pronounce that, it's typically not the name you would remember, memorize, or know about. Then it has a brand name, which is the official or the chosen name by the manufacturer for its marketing, which could be, for example, Tylenol. 
But the likelihood of going into a drugstore globally by just sheer chance, asking for Tylenol, the chance is pretty low that they will actually know what it is, depending on which country you enter. But there is a great likelihood that if you say paracetamol, which is its generic name, uh, they will recognize what you're talking about or what you're asking for. And I would say for your medical studies, the generic name is where you want to turn your attention. And then depending on which country you practice in, you will probably learn a couple of different brands for it. Now we can also take a look at two other examples like ibuprofen. It has a very complicated chemical name. No need to read it out. Same with diazepam. Looking here, it's even more complicated. And they go under different brand names as well. Like diazepam goes under Valium or Diastat. Ibuprofen, Advil, or Motrin, for example. But I would say 99.9% .9 of practitioners will know these generic names. And that's where you should turn your focus to. Now, we can't talk about drug administration without discussing its different routes. So how do we actually get it into our body? Well, there are several ways all having different mechanisms as well. So it could be oral. Now this is very convenient and easy. You just swallow a pill. But it's slower due to digestion. Then we have intravenous. So this is directly put into the bloodstream for rapid action. We have intramuscular. So we inject into muscles offering an intermediate absorption. And we have subcutaneous, so beneath the skin, for slower, sustained release. And we have a lot of other different routes, like inhalation, transdermal, topical, rectal, for example. And you can pause and take a look at the illustration right here, where we cover a lot of different routes. So the key point here, here is that not only that drugs can be, for example, injected, inhaled, absorbed through the skin or swallowed as a pill, etc. But it's also important to remember that there are reasons for taking it differently. So the administration route also have uh, consequences for how it's actually absorbed. We want it fast, we want it slow, we want it over time, etc. So different paths for different needs. Now, no course in pharmacology would be complete without a detailed study of pharmacokinetics. And studying pharmacokinetics helps us understand how a drug is absorbed, how it's distributed, metabolized, and excreted. So in other words, what the body does to the drug is what we're studying here. And this knowledge is essential for choosing the right dose, the right timing and route of administration to ensure safe and effective treatment. For example, if you take oral ibuprofen, it's absorbed in the stomach and it's distributed via the bloodstream. Then it's metabolized by the liver and excreted by the kidneys. So it includes all key pharmacokinetic uh, steps that determine how long and how strong its effect will be. So that's what we're going to focus on on our coming lessons on pharmacokinetics. But pharmacokinetics is not enough. We also have another crucial and important concept, which is pharmacodynamics. And pharmacodynamics focuses on what the drug does to the body. So we've talked about how it enters, where it goes out, how it's metabolized. But what does it do to the body? How does it interact with our receptors, enzymes, our cells to produce its effects? And understanding this allows us to predict therapeutic outcomes, side effects, and how different drugs might interact at different targets. So central to it is, for example, the receptors. So proteins in the body that are proteins in the body that drugs will bind to for effect. And we have mechanism of action, of course, how a drug interacts with the receptors. We have agonist or antagonist. Does it block it or does it bind to it, leading to some effect? 
Another important concept is the dose response relationship. So the relationship between the dose given and the effect. We have concepts like potency. So how much drug is needed for the effect and efficacy. So the maximum effect a drug can achieve. If we go back, we had ibuprofen, right? We said that it was absorbed in the stomach, distributed through the blood, metabolized by the liver, and then excreted by the kidney. So it covered all pharmacokinetic steps. Now, if we look at it um, through the pharmacodynamic lens, ibuprofen works by inhibiting the so-called COX enzymes. These decrease prostaglandin production leading to reducing inflammation, pain, and fever. And that's the pharmacodynamic effect. And as students, we have to keep both of these things in our head at the same time when studying medication or drugs, etc. How does it come in? How does it go out? What does it do during that span? Excellent. And that's the end of the first introductory lesson. Continue now to chapter 2.